It was a cool winter's evening. In front of you crackled a gentle yet incredibly hot fire that drowned the entire room in a cozy orange glow. You sighed. You were sitting on a large comfy leather couch big enough to fit four people. A blanket draped around your body. Sipping at a cup of tea that you were holding tightly with both hands. Out of the windows you saw gently falling snow and an idyllic snow-covered plains as far as your eyes could see. A glass coffee table with a half-finished game of chess stood before you. From somewhere played gentle jazz music. That was... There was no real indication of where it came from. There were no speakers, no jukeboxes. It just played within the overall ambience. You'd almost consider it playing in your head, but... Your thoughts were somewhere else entirely. Even though it really fit with the aesthetic of the place you found yourself in. Quietly, you placed the cup down on the table after another sip. Found yourself in this place. That was a good way of putting it. Judging by the skies outside the window, it was your... 12th day in the cabin. Though the days themselves seemed short. Feeling like only two hours, what so should actually be 24. But by now you had accepted it. The walls and floor were made out of polished indoor wood. In fact, it was so polished it was reflective. This place was one large room. Combining the living room where you were right now seated in and a fully decked out kitchen. In the same cozy wooden style. You had tried leaving through the main door, but it wouldn't budge, and the windows were tightly shut as well, only letting in the cold from outside if the fire died out. The fridge seemed to restock itself every five hours, which led to you rationing any meal. It seemed to be random what was in it, and you really wanted some leftovers from a previous day if what was in there wasn't to your liking. You leaned against the couch, stretching your legs. Sitting all the time was tiring, after all. This place had been a reward, given to you by Ringmaster Kane after one of his adventures. An adventure he had called Run. It had been the worst, most tiring and terrifying adventure yet. And seeing the letters RUN in all capitals floating behind Kane as he explained it was the least scary thing about it. And after the explanation had ended, everyone was knocked out. And you all had awoken on dirty hospital beds. The air smelling of burnt gasoline and sulfur. A long hospital hallway dilapidated. The patient doors on the walls were all locked, their tiny windows showing nothing but a gaping darkness, so not like there was anything in those rooms of any interest to you. The walls were covered in dried blood and mold, the light bulbs above flickering with red light. Through a locked glass door, you saw silhouettes of horrifying monsters fighting each other to be the first in line at the window. The door had multiple locks, and once your foot touched your ground for the first time, one of them exploded. You were alone, and judging by the one lock being open, well, that indicated that the others were still knocked out on their beds in other hallways just like this one. And so you did the smartest thing you could think of. You turned around, seeing this as an opportunity to get ahead at start. The hallway was long and non-Euclidean. It was impossibly long. 
broken hospital beds, tables and chairs were scattered everywhere, making traversal a nightmare. Every time a character awoke and their foot touched the ground, a lock burst open on the door. You hoped one of the more capable characters would be the last to awaken. And by more capable, you only thought was of Ragatha. Jax was too self-centered to just stay in bed until the adventure was over. He'd be bored in seconds. Pomni probably too afraid to sit. And Gangle... Gangle would probably abstract if she looked at the beast's silhouettes for too long. Zobel probably was like you, jumping out of bed the moment she awoke, trying to get as much of a head start as possible. And Kinger? Kinger would probably try to open the stupid door himself. Seal after seal was unleashed, indicated by a loud, echoing sound of breaking metal. Even after you lost visual contact with the door, you just knew what was happening there. And then, the lights flickered, and the screams of the damned came from behind you. You ran. Ran faster than you had ever run before. Even discarding your clothes to have less friction and weight on you to slow you down. And yet, the noises of crushing furniture, breaking beds, and claws dragging across the walls it came closer and closer. Your heart was beating so fast it almost burst, and yet... From the end of the hallway, a white light appeared, leading to a wooden door. And once you broke through it, it locked behind you. The nightmare of the adventure Kane had called Run being over. Since then, you had been stuck in this cozy little jazzy room. The only contact was a single record you placed on a record player you had found on a bookshelf. It played Kane's pre-recorded voice. Welcome, welcome, insert name here, to the Winter Lodge! Your reward for being the first to reach the end of my fantastic... Fantastic running adventure! Of course you had smashed that cursed record. The moment it stopped playing. <sighs> what a joke. <laughs> well, well, at least they were close here. You wonder if going commander actually did speed you up a little. Or if your panicked brain made you lose your morals. Yeah, it was probably both. Though the loneliness wasn't as bad as you expected. You were in a place that wasn't designed to be a sensory overload. You didn't have to participate in another adventure. And most importantly, you could sleep whenever you wanted. And you even had something like dreams in this place. Something you usually didn't in the digital circus. Well, not that you remembered any, but you certainly felt more relaxed whenever you awoke. Like the sleep was actual sleep. You had only one fear, and that was waking up one day and being back in the regular digital circus. You had just taken your teacup again when a loud knocking from your window made you drop the cup and scream in terror. Afraid, you huddled against the armrest of the sofa, facing it. Your eyes fell upon Jax. He was covered in snow, his mouth turned upside down. He was out of breath, and icicles hung from his ears. He shouted something, and judging by his banging, he was begging to be let inside. Intimidated, and yet curiosity winning, all the same, you quickly huddled to the window. And the lever that was obviously meant for it to open finally bludged. 
Jax fell into the living space. Accompanied by a wave of cold wind that made you grab your blanket and wrap it in more around yourself. You closed the window as soon as he was inside. Jax was out of breath and already standing close to the fire to warm himself. The purple bunny man stared at you perplexed. What are you doing here? Jax sighed. Uh, adventuring. He grunted. Don't tell me run is still happening and you're the second one to arrive. He shook his head. Run ended a while ago. It ended with you. It was a one winner adventure. They're not that rare. He sat down on your couch. You following suit and sitting down next to him. Jack sighed. <sighs> <sighs> Kelly, he sent us on an adventure to find you. Kelly was your name inside the digital circus. You had ordered Kane to re-roll the random name generator until something that sounded like an actual human name came up. Kelly being the first. Inside the digital world, you had become a humanoid cat, similar to how Jax was a humanoid bunny. You had black fur long pointy ears, a black button nose, and a long black tail, and green eyes that glowed in the dark. Your know, clothes inside the circus were Egyptian-themed, in the form of a long white dress, and a snake-themed golden circlet you wore on your head. Jack sighed. Why are you so scared? What's out there? There are things hiding in the snow. I wasn't really looking forward to being eaten. I also didn't really quite get a good look at them. You saw them, right? Those silhouettes in the snow? You had just assumed they were like tree stumps or something. Now that you knew that they were like creepy ghost shadow people. Ugh, it made your neck hair stand up. You look down at your hands. Well, uh, I'm safe here. He did say this was my reward for winning. Yeah, and the adventure of finding you are a punishment for losing. I see. That would explain why it took days for anything to happen here. What now? Well, uh, technically adventure is over, now that i found you. I guess tomorrow I'll just wake up in my normal bed, huh? More than likely. You made a noise of discomfort. Jax meanwhile stood up and explored the small cabin. Sheesh. This place looks like paradise. He wandered into the kitchen and opened the fridge, taking out a slice of American cheesecake. Sweet, he muttered. You don't mind, do you? You looked up, seeing him already with a fork in his mouth, chewing. I actually don't. They respawn quite often. He placed the slice of cake on the stove as he continued eating. So what did you do all this time? You blushed. It was hidden by a fur, but you could feel your cheeks heat up. I was doing nothing. Nothing? I just ate and slept and ate and slept. Jax crossed his arms and chuckled. <laughs> you mean like a cat? You're right, I twitched and you hissed. <sighs> hey, you don't have to state the obvious. He laughed in response. Really nice place, though. I could see myself living here for a while. After finishing his cake, he wandered back over to you and sitting down. Really? I mean, I don't mind your presence. You're ten times better company than hoo-ha or squiggle magic. Right. 
I mean, I bothered remembering your name. You nodded. That he did. Oh, that's partially because I think you're cute. Your tail unintentionally twitched in response to that. And he immediately picked up on that too. Oh. Does Kitty like being called cute? You puffed up your cheeks and looked away. I'm not cute. Suddenly, Jack laid an arm around your shoulders, making you shudder and your hair stand up. Oh, are you now then? Hmm. So what are you then? He put a finger on your chin, turning your head to face him. What are you doing? You hissed. Take advantage of where we are. You're deadpanned. And the fact you're not fighting me must mean you're thinking the same thing. If this is your last day in this love shack, why not use it like one, too? As an explosive goodbye. Ugh, don't call it a love shack. That's gross. <laughs> what would you like to call it, then? He said as he pushed you down on your back. His face only mere inches away from yours. You could feel a salt breath cascade down your face. I'd call it... I, I, I'd, I'd call it... Your mind was flooded by lewd images of the things the two of you could be doing right now. I'd call it whatever. Please, let's just... Please, let's just beep! Surprised, he raised an eyebrow. So the censorship of the digital circus still functioned here. But he knew what you meant. Please, I was so lonely. I, I mean, it wasn't hell, but... Oh, God, please, just take me. Jax huffed and then smiled. Of course, Kelly. I'd love to. Jax kissed you on the mouth, putting his entire body weight into it, too. You hummed into him. It was nice having Jax on top of you. With one hand, he gently caressed your cheek, while his other slid down your tummy. Your fur was so sensitive there, it made your legs shiver. Maybe that's why real cats immediately scratch when you pet them there. It felt so good, it was almost too good. For just a moment, Jax released himself from your lips to make a dumb joke. <laughs> Fine. Let's call it the nut shack. You chuckled and simply shrugged, long caring about the name for some stupid room created by Cain for you as a reward. You just want a Jax. And only Jax. With two fingers, he lightly pulled at the hairs on your chin to open your mouth. As your face is once again pressed on top of each other. Your tongue lapped out, and he hummed a quiet chuckle, which made you grunt. Your tongue was rough. Like that of a real cat. Honestly, he didn't expect it, but he should have. That's why he found it so amusing. But something about its roughness and strength really turned him on. Before this, he wanted to just tease you a bit longer before pulling away and calling it off, but feeling your strong, vigorous tongue wrestle with his, it was wonderful. And hot. And now he really was in the mood. Not to mention fucking a literal cat girl. Now that was a dream come true. 
thank you to the people who are supporting me on Kofi. You guys are keeping me alive. Special thank you to my lovely darling channel members Aruna, Chloe Rockenbow, Cherry Red Bunny, D's Nuts, Nicodemus D, Cat Cove, Kaya Abyss, Bit Bit, Zings X3, Melofia, Lavender Cheese, Muffin, A Simp, Hella, Nexorist, AJ Anime Girl, and Hopeful.